If it weren't for Sammy, I wouldn't be sitting here. My grandchildren, my two great grandchildren, would not be here. It would not be here. Well, my grandfather came to Australia with my father in 1937. Uh, that was sponsored by Mr. Samuel Wynn. It's really because of Hava that we're all here. Yeah. And I mean, Hava was who could have perished in the Holocaust, for sure. I want everyone to say thank you so much to Tanya and John for hosting this event with you. Yeah. 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 This is all this incredible opportunity, and I'd also like to thank uh, Kim and John, our professors of genealogy, who have uh, done the research that has meant that there's so many of us all now um, connected in this lovely uh, way. So it's a very bittersweet um, occasion, an occasion like this, because you see all these people that have had the opportunities to make lives for themselves in Australia and form loving relationships and so forth. And, Business is, of course, so many people weren't able to do that, but that's for another occasion. But what we should be celebrating today is the fact that we're all here and we've had the opportunities that we've had, and that's because of our forefathers, and it's lovely that we can reflect that today. So thank you very much. I'm Jean, I'm an original song. My father came to my uncle, Sean and he became the wine cellar in Burke Street and he worked in the wine cellar for a year and then he brought mum and dad out mum and my brother out a, a year later and then um, because my dad was uh, from Lodge and from Lodge they were um, making shops and things like that he opened up a factory with mum in Carlton in front of the little shop and then he started to bring out his sisters and his grandfather and his father and an uncle and then on my mother's side she brought out all her family and all their siblings. Oh, coincides with my story. Jean is my first cousin. Her late name was Silman. My mother was a Silman. So her father brought out my mother, brought out Harry's mother, brought out uh, 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 Miriam, and yeah. They were married when they came out. They were very young. He was 21 or 2, and they migrated, the story goes, um, to avoid him doing military service with Russia. Um, so where were they from? They were from um, outside Lodz and he was, um, apparently he, he ran away from home and went to a yeshiva and did some religious education and then apparently didn't like that, went back home again. And uh, David was my father. I'm okay. Toby's cousin, first cousin. Yeah, three boys, there was my dad, David, and then there were the twins, yeah. Ron and Victor. I don't think he was a children's sort of man. Um, yeah, I, I just found him, he was a bit obnoxious, a bit sort of um, impatient and, I mean, he was obviously incredibly successful, incredibly well respected, all those sort of things, but unfortunately no memories of my um, grandmother, my namesake, she thinks she died yeah. before I was born. So I didn't ever know her, but apparently she was a lovely woman. He seemed to have good taste in women. He had three, yeah. and I gather that... Um, Eva was a lovely woman, as indeed was Ida, second wife. I have more memories of when they lived in um, Stanhill. If I would have been, you know, six, between six and eight or nine. Yeah, I think when it was first built, they were one of the, the little. I remember going there and um, spending time looking through their cabinets. Of, uh, they had a lot of um, chinoiserie. Yeah. My brother-in-law, Francis, who 
is too complicated. <laughs> but anyway, he says that the winds are all incredibly intelligent. Um, I know Dad didn't do well academically, which is quite interesting because he was an incredibly successful businessman, built up the, the wine business way, way above what... I mean, Sam Samuel, grandfather, gets more of the credit now, but I really think most of the credit should go to Dad, because um, he built it up from a sort of early minor sort of wine business to a really big, respected, highly um, valued wine business with, you know, high quality wine. It was always his ambition to change from being a sort of... Um, he, that's why he wanted to grow wines. He didn't... Grandpa was primarily a, a, a wine bottler. Um, and the only wine that they made was sort of sweet wine. And Dad wanted to turn it into really quality sort of wine. So he introduced things like the term estate and yeah. applied to food wine. Like Toby, I didn't know there was any extended family. I thought that we, we were it. But us and um, Toby, Sabina and Simon, Nicola, I thought that was it. I didn't think there was any, any more family, so I was totally blown away by all this. Interesting. Because what I, what I realised has happened is that um, all the connections come from grandmother's side and the Silman side. I think all of the connections come from that side rather than from the wind side, don't they? In this particular thing. And apparently, um, grandmother, Wynne, Samuel, uh, was instrumental in bringing quite a few of those. Yeah, but apparently not his own. I mean, what we had always heard was that um, they perished, and so there weren't any more. The original song. My father came to my uncle, Sean, who was in the wine cellar in Burke Street, and he worked in all the cellar for a year. And then he brought mum and dad out, mum mum and my brother out a, a year later. And then, um, because my dad was uh, from Lodge, and from Lodge they were um, making shops and things like that. He opened up a factory with Mum in Carlton in front of the living room. And then he started to bring out his sisters and his grandfather, his father, and an uncle. And then on my mother's side, she brought out all her family, all their siblings. Say who they are, because I want to say who they are. The names, the names, the names. Yeah. Nothing here, the Pinter's Pinter family. <laughs> and then my father and my grandfather, he was the most gorgeous fellow. He, he never said a word, he was very quiet. <laughs> he should say the name of your grandfather. He came to Australia, they both came in 1937 and my grandfather was very troubled about whether to come or not to come. He knew there was trouble coming in Europe but he didn't really want to come. Uh, my father was telling me stories how he went to the local rabbi and then to another rabbi about should they go. And anyway, my grandfather and my father came. My grandfather hated Australia. He said it was a cultural desert for Jews and he wanted to go back but it was too late and because the war broke out and his wife and other children were killed in the Holocaust and he died of a broken heart in 1956. 
And my father went on to join the Air Force and uh, then got out of the Air Force, then got married and then started his own business and worked. He was a hard worker and he was a very successful uh, businessman. He moved to Israel in 1970 and he passed away in 2011. And he had a very full life and uh, my mother passed away. Uh, Eight years ago, uh, and I'm one of uh, five children. Yes. Uh, my youngest brother, Stephen, passed away in 1983. He was killed in Israel, in Egypt, actually. And uh, I've got one sister lives in Israel with four kids. Another sister lives in in uh, Mallorca, Spain, and she's got one daughter who's a very successful artist living in London, also with another daughter. So, we're, uh, we're, we're, we're graphically spread well. Things being well, it's, it's very interesting because I, when I got a phone call uh, about two months ago from a woman and she, who asked me if I was related to Joachim Selman and I said I'd never heard of him. I didn't know my grandfather had brothers. I didn't know any of this. And uh, I knew, uh, and so it's, it was very out of the blue and that's one of the reasons I came to it because I'm very interested to see how this all came together and I didn't realise I had such a big family base here. It's, uh, it's a new experience for me. I remember having, uh, going to visit Franya and, and the Halprins, and uh, the name, the Duns ring a bell, but I don't remember ever meeting, and the Sharps, but I don't remember ever meeting uh, any of the Wins. So I'm the son of Alan Wynn, Dr. Alan Wynn, uh, whose two twin brother was Victor Wynn, whose elder brother was David Wynn, the three sons together of uh, Sammy and Eva Wynn. And we all grew up in Melbourne. Um, and then in about 1970, um, the family moved to the UK and relocated to London. Simon, my brother, had already started his law degree at Melbourne, so Melbourne Uni, so he stayed on. So Sabina and I uh, moved over to London. I lived in London for the next uh, 20 years with mum and dad. And um, uh, Sabina stayed in England for about seven years, six years. She did a degree in England, then came back to Australia. She now lives in Sydney. Um, Simon uh, came to England for about two years um, and then ended up uh, moving to New York and has lived in Manhattan for the last uh, 35 years, 40 years. And uh, um, I lived in London, as I said, for about 20 years and then met Tim, my wife, and moved to uh, the Yorkshire Moors, just outside Halifax, which is, I suppose, between Leeds and Manchester. And um, we live in a 17th century farmhouse on a beautiful open uh, moorland. We've got three children, Joe, Sam and Abra, and uh, they're all now grown up and left home, uh, but all based in the north of the years. And it was really through the internet, and uh, my wife's uh, got a passion for genealogy, and she's been researching the family. And through that, she made a connection to John, her husband, and um, they discovered the family links and so forth. And I've always been intrigued um, because I was aware that when I was growing up in Melbourne, that there were second cousins and relations of that nature that we would see once a year. Uh, we would go and celebrate Seder, um, and I guess we would bump into them probably the two times that we would go to Shul, uh, Rosh Hashanah, and my memory of Sammy was that he was a demon uh, Scrabble player, yeah. and uh, absolutely uh, uh, yeah, razor sharp mind, but he was an old man then, and thinking back, you know, we had quite a cold relationship really with him, because he uh, uh, had... Uh, you know, he'd been a practicing Jew all his life, and our family weren't really. We were totally non-observant. Um, and so to the extent to which we did, um, uh, uh, were observant, it was really 
largely to protect, placate him, I think. Um, my first reaction is it's an, I'm an incredibly lucky person um, that in, 2000, in 1913 my uh, grandfather and his wife had the courage, at, you know, the young couple, only been married a few months, with no money, um, no facility with language, they uh, spoke Yiddish, like the only book my grandfather had ever read in his life was the Talmud, and they set off to escape the persecution that was uh, prevalent at the time, and had they not done so, I wouldn't exist. And then, on top of that, um, within a very short space of time, my uh, uh, grandfather had established himself as a successful immigrant into this country, he was able to put his three sons through Wesley College. They, as a result of that, attained very high educations, both my fa father and his twin brother. Um, achieved all sorts of ac academic distinction and, and went on to very successful careers in medicine and um, that's given me the lifestyle that I now am privileged to enjoy and, and uh, it's an extraordinary um, uh, you know, stroke of good fortune to have been born into a family that were able to uh, uh, overcome adversity and, and have the you know, uh, spirit to do so. I think doing some of the research, you do get a sense that um, that community did look after itself. I mean, they. You, uh, one of the aspects of that is that my uh, wife has found a lot of documentation of my father, my un sorry, my grandfather, making applications for other people, other families in similar situations, to be members, but also friends, to leave Europe. And some of them were lucky enough to come in the very late year, late months of 1939. You know what that means. Um, so. But you get a sense that, and, and from reading my father's book and his description of, of what Sammy was like um, in the 20s and so forth, of them really being concerned, obviously, to make and set out and become Australian, but at the same time uh, maintain their connections to their communities and, and help people that are just coming themselves and, and trying to make a start. Like they all did that. Hmm. Well, my name is Diana Davis, me Halperin. And I am the eldest grandchild of Sprinzer and Nochum Dan. And my grandmother, Sprinzer, was a Silman. I do know that when my grandfather came here first with his eldest son, David, my grandmother and five children, the youngest of which was a baby at the time, moved from Gavolin, where they lived, which is about an hour and a half out of Warsaw, and she moved back to Warsaw and moved in with her parents so that they could help support her and the children for three years. And then she came here with these five children. My mother is the second oldest. She was the oldest girl. First there was David and he came here with his father. And then my mother came with her mother and the rest of them. And she was about 15. Right, my grandfather and, the, and his son David came in 1928 and my grandmother and the children came in 1931, around August, September. And your mum was Hannah? Hannah. Brilliant. Hannah Halpern. Halpern. She became a helper. I was the first, I'm the oldest grandchild of ten. And it was five and a half years before the next one came along and they were the Sydney connection. So I was really here until my younger brother came and that was, uh, there's just approximately six year, seven years difference. So wherever my parents went, I went. And I was taken to all sorts of family things. I thought every kid of that age did that, you see, I'm only different. And I loved it. I loved being part of that whole group of, of, of people who, a lot of them were pre-war, some of, some of them were post-war, uh, listening to Yiddish, I love the Yiddish cult of that family. And on a Sunday for, I can't tell you how many years, for decades, uh, my grandmother just expected the whole family to come for lunch every Sunday. And the whole family meant extended family if you had. So I was always the only kid for a long time in that environment. And I loved it. They taught me how to play Polish rummy. Yeah. <laughs> and if somebody wanted to go and have a cup of tea or go outside and have a cigarette or what have you, they would say, come and play my hand. Yes. And I was like five or six, but I did it as well as they did. I had a fantastic um, childhood. Well, for lunch it would always be the children, my grandparents' children and their children, but keep in mind, for, a lot, for all those years, I was the only kid. Um, and then sometimes she would invite 
somebody that she felt would like to come and if they had a, a member of family or a close friend they'd say can we bring and she would say yes and we was always searching for extra chairs to go around the table. It was a big home, huge lounge room and dining room and massive kitchen and four bedrooms and one bathroom. They all survived on one bathroom and one toilet, no one sweat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm Carl, I'm married to Diana when I came into the family I uh, was amazed at the camaraderie and the open door um, attitude of the Durrans. There was never a time when that door was closed to anybody that knocked. And 15, 20 people for lunch was just the norm, of course. And uh, it, was, uh, it was a great pleasure to be part of my that. My mother is a Mary. sister to Maya Silverman, who's Jean's dad. And when she came out to Melbourne, my father came within a, probably a short time later from Lodge to Palestine, from Palestine to Australia, and they met up here. We finally came from New Zealand to um, Melbourne to settle back in the 1960s. So we actually grew up in New Zealand. Now, what were our connections here? Occasionally I would come to a wedding here and I was at the age of a mitzvah. So I remember staying at the Silmans. I remember going to the Duns. I sort of knew these people, but I was only here for a couple of weeks before we went back. But at the same time, we had the agency for Windvale Wines in New Zealand, which came out once a year for Pesach, the kosher wines. And I remember one year there was a strike. The ship went from... Wellington to Melbourne and back and never got unloaded and finally they, they panicked and they said how do we get the, this wine off the pacer? And I was a sort of a young boy and I spoke without an accent so they sent me down to the ship when it arrived in Wellington and said how I need to get wine off the ship. It was a Wonganella, I remember. And the guy looked into it and he says, it's right at the bottom of the hole. There's no way you're going to get it out. And I said, it has to be out by the end of the week. Why? And I said, well, it's a sort of religious thing. He said, what do you mean religious thing? What, are you, what does he know about religious things? I said, look, it's, it's worth something for you. <laughs> so I then went back to work and I was sort of an apprentice pharmacist. Within two hours the phone rang. Is there Harry Newhouse there? Yes, speaking. Can you come down it with a carrier and get this bloody stuff out of the <laughs> So he finished up with a few bottles of scotch and the, and the kosher wine was unloaded for the for the community. And my father Louis Dunn married out and uh, so my father is Jewish, my mother is Catholic and I grew up in a mixed household and uh, I remember with such love and such richness my, my Jewish, precious Jewish heritage and uh, you know I remember tremendously the um, the, the decor, the interiors of, of, of being with my beloved paternal grandparents as a child. I spent a lot of time there too with my father. And you know, Nanny Dunn was, was the, the, the beautiful Venetian glass bowls of chocolates and, and brandy plum in dark chocolates and, and the beautiful um, you know, chopped liver and, and all the beautiful little biscuits that Nanny Dunn would get from the, the baker that was just around the corner in Rathdown Street and things that were just so deliciously red cherry jam and dark poppy seed cake and and you know it was Children all and Papa Dunn is always <laughs> always in a bad mood, Papa Dunn. And uh, and Dad and Papa Dunn would talk business and Papa Dunn would always have a whiskey. And uh, but he always called me darling, he loved me, you know, it was just a very rich relationship. And uh, maybe even sweeter because of the 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 mixed marriage, I don't know, but uh, uh, my memories of great love and uh, and uh, um, a prayer, a gratitude. Yeah. Um, Sam was very, very active in the Zionist movement. Mm -hmm. He was at one time president of the State Zionist Council, yes. and I was working in Beth Eitzman at the time, so I had a lot to do with him. And also his second wife, Ida, yeah. who was a stalwart with Witso, yes. and I was the organiser of Witso for 21 years. So I had a very close relationship with them at that time. Yeah. Wonderful people. Oh, yeah. Now, I would, really would like to paid a tremendous tribute 
to Sammy Wynn. If it weren't for Sammy, I wouldn't be sitting here. My grandchildren, my two great-grandchildren would not be here, would not be here if they were there in Israel. Um, I rem and my mother finished up by being the housekeeper right during the war. We arrived just days before the war started, literally three days before the war. It was a matter of life and death for us because we were born, I was born in Germany, even though my parents were from Poland. So it was get out at any price. My father didn't manage it. He finished up in Russia, but survived and came after the war. And, I re and my younger sister and I were in a children's home in Baldwin, run by the Jewish Welfare Society. A short, it were, there weren't that many children. It was the only Jewish transport of unaccompanied children that came, managed to come to Australia. There's a book written about that. Uh, and uh, I remember every Yontif, Pesach, Rosh uh, Hashanah, even Saturdays, uh, Shabbat, we were, my younger sister and I came to the Wind's home in Turek. And um, they, it was a circle that he had of highly intellectual people that he gathered around him. And he was very active. I mean, if any of you go, ever go to the Kadima, you will see that there were years that he was the president of the Kadima. And I mean, Kim showed me the people that he tried to get out and unfortunately <coughs> couldn't. So he really, I think of all the people that I know, I think he did the most to try and get people to Australia or out of the, the, the horror that was going on there.